Hi everybody, welcome to Storytime with Stan. Me, Stan Kittle. We might as well get started. We have a lot of stories to read. The True Story of the Three Little Pigs As told to John Skeza, illustrated by Lane Smith. Everyone knows the story of the Three Little Pigs. Or at least they think they do. But I'll let you in on a little secret. Nobody knows a real story because no one's ever heard my side of the story. I'm the wolf. Alexander T. Wolf. You can call me Al. I don't know how this whole big bad wolf thing got started, but it's all wrong. Maybe it's because of our diet. Hey, is it my fault that wolves like to eat cute little animals like bunnies, sheep, and pigs? That's just the way we are. If a cheeseburger were cute, folks would probably think you were big and bad too. But like I was saying, the whole big bad wolf thing is all wrong. The real story is about a sneeze and a cup of sugar. This is the real story. Way back once upon a time, I was making a birthday cake for my dear old granny, and I had a terrible sneezing cold. I ran out of sugar, so I walked down the street to ask my neighbor for a cup of sugar. Now this neighbor was a pig, and he wasn't too bright either. He had built his whole house out of straw. Can you believe it? I mean, who in their right mind would build a house of straw? So, of course, the minute I knocked on the door, it fell right in. I didn't want to just walk into someone else's house, so I called, Little pig, little pig, are you in? No answer. I was just about to go home without a cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. That's when my nose started to itch. I felt a sneeze coming on. Well, I huffed. And I puffed, and I sneezed a great sneeze. And you know what? That whole darn straw house fell down. And right in the middle of the pile of straw was the first little pig, dead as a doornail. He had been there the whole time. It seemed like a shame to leave a perfectly good ham dinner lying there in the straw. So I ate him up. Think of it like a big cheeseburger just lying there. I was feeling a little better, but I still didn't have a cup of sugar. So I went to the next door neighbor's house. Now this neighbor was the first little pig's brother. And he was a little smarter, but not by much. He had built his house of sticks. I rang the doorbell in the stick house. Nobody answered. I called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? And he yelled back, Go away, wolf, you can't come in. I'm shaving my chinny chin chin. I just grabbed the doorknob when I felt another sneeze coming on. I huffed and I snuffed and I tried to cover my mouth, but I sneezed a great big sneeze. And you're not going to believe it, but this guy's house fell down just like his brother's. And when the dust cleared, there was the second pig, dead as a doornail. Wolf's honor. Now you know how food spoils if it's left out in the open. So I did the only thing there was to do. I had dinner again. Think of it like a second helping. I was getting awfully full, but my cold was feeling a little better. I still didn't have that cup of sugar for my dear granny's birthday cake, so I went to the next house. Now this guy was the first and second pig's brother. He must have been the brains of the family. He had built his house of bricks. I knocked on the brick house, no answer. Then I called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? And do you know what that rude little porker answered? Get out of here, wolf. Don't bother me again. Talk about impolite. He probably had a whole sack full of sugar. And he wouldn't give me even one cup for my poor sweet old granny's birthday cake. What a pig! I was just about to go home and maybe make a nice birthday card instead of a cake when I felt my cold coming on again. I huffed and I snuffed and I sneezed once again. And then the third little pig said, Eh, your old granny can sit on a pen. No, I'm usually a pretty calm fella. But when someone talks about my granny like that, I get a little crazy. When the cops showed up, of course, I was trying to 
break down the pig's door. And the whole time I was huffing and puffing and sneezing and making a big scene. And the rest, as they say, is history. And the news reporters found out about the two pigs that I had for dinner. And they figured a sick guy going around borrowing a cup of sugar didn't sound very exciting. So they jazzed up the whole story with all that huffing and puffing and blowing down your house. And they made me the big bad wolf. That's it. The real story. I was framed. But uh, maybe you could loan me a cup of sugar? Wasn't that a fun story? We'll see you next time for more stories with Storytime with Stan.